Good morning. I am John Henderson, and I want to welcome you to the first of the series of our Bible study brought to you from our studio sponsored by St. Albans Episcopal Church in Monroe, who invited me, asked me to do this series, furnished a wonderful studio, and thanks to Mallory Sanders and Steve DeMoss, who are the technical people primarily in charge of this. Let me tell you what we are doing, and it's an exciting concept. The Bible study that we are talking about is through a focus of the entire Bible, the history of faith, focusing upon what the Bible says and the principles we can learn about discipleship. The title of what we are doing is Becoming His Beloved. Answering God's call to discipleship. In my studies, both in college where at, at Emory I majored in religion studies for my undergraduate degree and then I had a graduate study at Candler School of Theology in the seminary. One of the things that I noticed over a long period of Bible study is that the Bible is progressive in terms of what you learn. What we learn from the Bible is built upon things that we have learned a little further back in the Bible. So this course envisions several things. Number one is it is an encouragement for each of you to study the Bible yourself. We follow the Bible beginning with Genesis through to Revelation. At the time that I am speaking to you right now, we have done approximately 75 of these lectures which are on the website johnwhenderson.com. That is this ministry's site. Now, why do I call it a ministry? Because this is a teaching ministry with us all involved in learning what the Bible wants us to know individually. I, throughout my teaching and my own thought process, I make the observation that I make now. It is very helpful in viewing the Bible if you think of the Bible as a very, very long letter written from God to you. I view it as a letter written to me. I recommend that you read the Bible as I have found is the best way to understand it. Begin at Genesis. There are other ways that are recommended for reading the Bible. The Bible starts out with basic principles, with the beginning for a reason, because it builds and builds and builds. God's revelations concerning both himself and what he requires of us in answering his call to discipleship is progressive, and it progresses through the pages of the Bible. Now, this course is being utilized even though there has been very little publicity so far, but that's about to change. The, the course 
as I mentioned, already has approximately 75 of these segments or lectures that are archived at johnwhenderson.com. There are a number of platforms that the link is linked to, but this is the easiest one to get to. As near as we can tell, there have been thousands of downloads of these segments. We know that this lecture series is being picked up in a number of foreign countries. I personally know of some people following this series in Japan, Pakistan, South Africa, Germany, Sweden, and Denmark. And those are just the ones that we know about because there's no way really to know other than if we just happen upon it. It is being utilized by churches that we've already been contacted. I've been contacted by churches that are using this series as bases for adult discipleship Bible study Sunday school classes. There are some churches that are using this series uh, as a broadcast Bible study and recommending the church uh, participate online or on screen. You can also follow me at my Facebook site where there are postings concerning what we are doing concerning this ministry. Now, why discipleship? Discipleship, I have learned, I have concluded, I have seen. It is no accident that the theme that went all through Jesus' three-year ministry with the utmost intensity was the theme of discipleship. Remember, Jesus did not perform his first miracle nor preach his first sermon nor teach his first group of people until what? until he had called 12 disciples. The core of the people that he was teaching throughout his entire ministry. Think about the Gospels, the words of Jesus, and how he did it. When a miracle was performed or he taught a certain thing that astounded everyone because it was, it was so different from what they, the, the, the church or, or the uh, religious organization of the Hebrews had been teaching. It was the first thing that he did after the miracle or the parable. Explained it to his disciples. The Sermon on the Mount, one of the most extraordinary teaching sessions in the history of mankind, was teaching primarily to the disciples who were seated around him. The rest of the crowds were being taught, it is true, to make them disciples. Jesus started out with 12 disciples, but we know as we study that by the end of his ministry, there were hundreds of people following him as disciples. There may have even been thousands, but we know of hundreds. And then at the very end of his ministry, he had been crucified, buried, and resurrected what did he do during this resurrected period while he was still on earth? He spent the entire time with his disciples. And what was the very last thing he did on earth before he ascended into heaven? He issued to his disciples 
in Matthew, right at the end, the great commission to do what? Disciples, I empower you to go into all of the earth and make disciples of all nations. We've operated on that principle now for 2,000 years. It has caused the Christian faith to become not only the largest religion on earth, but the largest religion in the history of the earth. It was of paramount importance to Jesus. But Jesus didn't found the principles of discipleship. He was building upon the foundations of personal discipleship that began at the very beginning of the Bible. The whole Bible is constructed like Jesus' ministry as a teaching foundation and course progressing more and more and more toward what God wants from each of us which is for us to answer his and his son's call to discipleship. Now, the Bible begins with the book of Genesis. Mallory, if you could... Genesis is a word that means in the beginning. And the beginning of the Bible is the first five books of Moses. Moses, I think the scholars, uh, the religious scholars of the world and throughout history, if they've agreed upon anything, I think we've all pretty well agreed that there's no real controversy concerning Moses uh, having written the book of Genesis. He wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Now, they're in some of the scholarly inquiries, there, there are questions concerning, well, how do we really know that Mo Moses, how did Moses have the ability to write these five ponderous, completely full of facts and figures, books of the Bible? Well, there are several things that we can observe. Let's take up when the Genesis and the first five books of the Bible were written. They were written sometime during the 40 years that Moses was leading the Israelites when he had led them under God's direction out of bondage where they had been for 400 years just as God promised Abraham would happen. They had 40 years on the way to the promised land with Moses leading them. At that time in history, there was probably no one else in the world who would have had access and background to write such amazing things as we find in the first five books of the Bible. Now, how did that happen? It happened at the very beginning. Remember the little story from Bible school and Sunday school about the an evil Pharaoh announcing that the Hebrews 
that were in the land of Egypt were just getting to be too many, too populous. Uh, we need to kill all of the all of the baby male children of the Hebrews. Miriam, Moses' older sister, took baby Moses to try to avoid his being killed by Pharaoh's people and put him in, remember, the little basket made out of bulrushes, made into a little boat, and floated that little boat over where the Pharaoh's daughter came down from the palace daily to bathe in the River Nile. And so, lo and behold, here comes the Pharaoh's daughter. And what is this? What's in this little floating basket? Baby Moses. But we forget so easily what happened as a result of that. Moses was adopted by the family of the Pharaoh. He remained the adopted child of the Pharaoh's daughter and grew up in the very palace of the Pharaoh himself. Now what does that mean? What does that tell us? He received the highest and most astounding education that could possibly have been available to any person on earth. So Moses wasn't just the guy with the staff parting the waters for the movie. He was highly educated, spoke fluently at least Hebrew and Egyptian. It points to Moses that he interspersed throughout some of the early uh, the early copies and translations of the five books are interspersed among the Hebrew words, Egyptian words that would have been borrowed where there wasn't a readily available Hebrew word for it. Again, pointing to Moses. How did Moses know all these things that he put in the, particularly in Genesis. Well, he was in a position as leader of all of the Israelites to have access to everything that the leaders knew. Now, during the 40 years that the Israelites were in the wilderness, there was approximately at least a million Israelites. Remember, they came into 400 years before that. The number that we know that of Israelites who were the family of Jacob who entered Egypt was about 70. By the time 400 years later, we see from Genesis that the ones who left following Moses' leadership was around, depending on how you figure family and right from the Bible, we have the figure of right around a million. If you add the wife and some children, it could have been as many as several million. Well, as the Hebrews journeyed for those 40 years, they had an organization of how they camped. And Mallory, if you could put up the organization of the, the picture of how the Hebrew camp of the Israelites was, and this was how they lived for 40 years. Notice at the center of that camp is the tabernacle of God. 
around that tabernacle at the very center, one of the things is the tent of Moses and his brother Aaron. Immediately, we learn from scholarship writings, as you get into how the, the tribes are organized around this center, the closest to the center is always the leaders of the, of the various of the 12 tribes. So he was, Moses was in the position to have right at his doorstep, so to speak, virtually all of the notes, writings, knowledge, and people who knew about these things. Also, Moses was the earliest and rarest person who had an extremely close personal relationship with who? God. God was revealing only way we could have had Moses know a lot of the things that he knew were through direct revelations of God. A combination of all these points to that the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, were written by Moses. And Moses reflected in his knowledge to write the first five books what God wants from each of us not to write or rewrite the Bible but to learn it as his revelations not only to Moses or his revelations to David or his revelations to Abraham but his revelations through them and through what they went to, through, his revelations to each of us as we hear his call and answer God's call to each of our discipleship. Thank you. See you next time.